now we are live. Today is March 3rd, 2016. Welcome, everybody. Hello, Bree, Makika, Michelle, Tina, Valerie, and Zay. Um, I'll start with um, a little uh, blessing and meditation, and then we go. If you want to introduce yourself, we will go around just to engage. If you don't want to do introductions, do the blessing. If you don't want to do the blessing, uh, talk about whatever your questions, bring up the questions about DNA and stuff. So first I will do a little, so I will sing for you a piece of beautiful DNA sequence. Um, this is one of the newest insertions of the human genome. Every one of you, everyone on the earth has it, but it's very fresh. It's very new, very modern. It, uh, it is inserted, it's 300 nucleotides, 300 letters, and it's inserted in many places, and different people and different races have this sequence in different places of your genome. So this sequence, I believe, defines the new human vibration or maybe new human alien vibration. It's called ALU Y B eight A L U letter Y B eight. And uh, just to give it a name, by some reason I I would you know I wanted some neutral name, so the neutral name would be Granada. It's like easy to remember. It's a town in Spain, a city in Spain, and let's call it Granada. So to refer to it. And I will see a piece of it because 300 letters is about five minutes to see. Um, there are many ways to see it, so I will see it um, in a simple chant way. And for you to engage, um, send it love, accept it. It's you. It's one of your highest vibrations. Connected to your crown chakra as a highest vibration. It's still a human vibration, but it's very high human vibration. So connected to the crown chakra and pick the color. Yes, and combine with purple. Pick your favorite color and combine with purple. Mm -hmm. And the letters are G, A, G, C, T. Now introductions. If you want to skip, just say I want to skip. So I'm Max, and I have many names. My um, I'm present here as Steinberg, and I do DNA and a little bit of channeling, and I love speaking galactic languages, I like listening to galactic languages. And we have here a humancolony.org community, and, we, and our new site is hucola.ning.com. And I had some other announcement. And I'm now in San Diego. That's the announcement. I'm in San Diego, and I would love to connect to our people in San Diego and Los Angeles and in between. So connect me to those people. It would be fun. And I have here now three meetups. One meetup is uh, a Reiki meetup, Reiki and Channeling. It's called Reiki and Channeling. 
human colony raking each other. And, hey, Caitlin, didn't see you for a while. And a uh, couple more meetups. So, and I go to other meetups and do raking stuff. So, uh, and I recently went to uh, Conscious Life Expo and met David Wilcock in person. That was fun. And I saw Stephen Greer speaking from the stage and a few, few more people who I knew before. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Caitlin, are you there? Can you speak? All right. Makika, is your, would you like to introduce yourself or ask questions or uh, whatever? Sure. I'm Makiko. I'm a Lakey practitioner and I also recently took the cranial sacral therapy. So I could add that to my repertoire. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm so looking forward to going to Asheville to build a tiny house. Uh-huh. Yes, and I love Asheville, doing which, it. Which, which Asheville? Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, wow. I love Outer Banks there. Outer Bank? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, who wouldn't? Mm-hmm. Um, and then I love, love DNA, so I'm so fortunate to connect with Max, the god of DNA. Woohoo! Thank you. Who wants to go next? Caitlin, can you speak? Caitlin says she has a lot. Hello, Max. Yay, nice to hear you. I didn't speak for you maybe for a year or so. Oh, yeah. Well, I've been just living life, and that's the reason why. (laughs) How are you? Nice to hear your voice. I'm good. I'm now in San Diego. Oh, okay. That's awesome. It's nice to see that you're doing well and everybody else is. Nice to have you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Hi, Max. Um, this is Valerie. Yes. Hey, Valerie. Nice to see your face. Reiki 2 now, thanks to Max. Wow. <laughs> I'm practicing that, and also I'm a seamstress. You can see that behind myself, all my sewing machine and stuff like that. Um, so I run a little company at home called 406 Upcycled, and Makiko recently purchased a beautiful coat for me, and um, <laughs> there she goes <laughs> advertising for me. Wow. Um, show it again. So, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll show I it on the full screen. And this one is called The Violet Flame. So I try to incorporate my spirituality into the sewing as well. Wow. Hmm. Yeah, I, I want I want one too. Uh, give me a good deal. Let's let's discuss after the webinar. We'll see. You I, got I it, just Max. I make I make men's as well, and there's nothing wrong with having the, uh, you know the, uh, hmm, I can't remember what they're called now. Right offhand, it just slipped my mind. But you know the the. The, the guys that spin in circles, the spinners that do that for enlightenment, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's that's what they're modeled after. Wow. Yeah. So any yeah, colors I, like? I would like something uh, to officiate those webinars. Maybe something DNA patterns, uh, tree of life patterns, and it would be like something like religious style, but new age religious style. I got gotcha. you. Oh, maybe we can start with the head. Maybe a head would be. A new and head. I think Max small for me. you, I, I believe. This um, See this one? It's a little small for me. I ordered in Israel, but. And you like that know. that pattern in the colors? It's beautiful. So yeah, I want purple and orange. Oh, you mm-hmm. got it. Those are beautiful colors. Beautiful colors. Yes, I can do that for you, Max. And and because you are such a wonderful person that taught me Reiki and. Well, I just love you, Max. It'll be donated to you. Wow. Thank you. It will be great. My pleasure. All right. Oh, who else? What else? I know. Nobody did that. Who wants to introduce themselves? Bree? Um, yeah, sure. Hi. My name is Bree. I'm excited to be here. I don't know how long I can stay, but um, I've been listening to a few of these DNA things before, and I loved every little bit of it. It's incredible information, and it's obviously so important for us to really start to understand, and Max, you do such a fantastic job at disseminating the information. I don't know what it is about how you talk, but it just, like, 
<laughs> it resonates so highly with me. I love it. Um, oh, thank you. So, yeah, to introduce myself a little bit, I, the really the only thing I want to bring up here is the fact that I'm helping plan this first scientific international global pyramid conference coming up in Chicago in May this year. Um, and so that is what I'm doing full-time, nonstop, also working full-time. So I'm probably going to be talking about it a lot on the side. Uh, so if anybody's interested, let me know. But um, What is the essence of it? I, the name doesn't say much. Uh, it is uh, scientists, researchers, archaeologists, and others coming together for the first time internationally to discuss the hard facts, the hard science behind um, what they found with the pyramids and uh, why they're here and what they're doing and their power to heal and transform, uh, heal the environment, decrease radiation, you know, um, heal us, help with meditation, all that great stuff. And then so it sounds addition, like you're talking about homemade pyramids, not Egyptian ones. We are talking about all pyramids all across the world, including homemade pyramids, uh -huh. um, especially talking about architects that are making their own pyramids. There's actually a gold pyramid uh, house um, tourist attraction that's right in Gurney, Illinois, right near where Wendy is, kind of near where the conference is. And um, we're going to be taking a tour there, talking to the guy who made that. I mean, it, there's just so much information. There's people, vendors there for crystal energy and for, um, you know, energy healing, Reiki. Um, we're going to have... Uh, Excuse me, Brie, where is this at? People talking about in the ancient civilizations and all that great stuff. Yeah. Where is this going to be at? I'm sorry? Where Did is this located? Oh, it is going to be right near Chicago, Illinois, in May. Oh, oh I Max, Chicago, you just I didn't left you. there. <laughs> Again? I said, you just left there. <laughs> I left there. I, don't, I didn't plan to come back soon. Oh, yeah. But uh, how, if people want to find it, uh, what's your website or web page? Uh, it is globalpyramidconference.com. Mm -hmm. We are trying to work on improving it. Uh, there's lots and lots and lots that needs to be done. So it's kind of like um, we have a tiny team effort right now, and we need all the help we can get. But mostly we just want to bring uh, people there who are helping for global ascension and um, you know humanity's evolution and really being able to um, get back to our roots and understand our real history instead of all the kind of nonsense that has been talked about. Sure, sure. <laughs> about nonsense. Um, I wish to help you in many ways. Uh, and the first one is if you want to do webinars with us and tell us more about the pyramids that I think would uh, give you a new platform to advertise, basically. People yeah. would love to hear more of science, more of experiences. That would be great. It, it kind of help. Um, who wants to speak next? Tina? Yes, hi. Um, hi. My name is Tina. I actually live in Canada. <laughs> I um, love Canada. Yes, <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, I um, for the last ten years I've been um, living. Well, I had a husband and he was native, and I have native roots. I am Abenaki, and I've been practicing the traditional life. And uh, we help each other out, go to sweat lodge, perform the pipe ceremonies, do a lot of prayers for other people. Uh, it's the real traditional way, and. Um, the name came to me, like my spirit name. My husband always said, he said, uh, your spirit name, it's not someone else that's going to give it to you. You're going to receive it from the spirit, from the creator. And um, there was a time where Native people didn't say their spirit name because they said that uh, some people can use it against you or use bad medicine against you. And uh, there was an elder, a Cree elder from uh, north of Canada that told me uh, recently, she says, you know, now is a time to say your name. Now is a time to open, to share who you are with others and not be afraid because that's what brings us down is that fear. Uh, it takes away our power. So um, 
my spirit name it's a uh, old polar bear woman who sings in the in the clouds um, I do native crafts I also do my own ceremonial uh, items that I need I made a owl wing here wow and I'm a, I'm a moon dancer which is um, I don't know if you ever heard of sun dance that's the man ceremony um, but the moon dance is the women they dance for four nights uh, they sleep a little in the day and then they get teachings but it's uh, the reason for the dance is to bring light to the darkness so basically you get in touch with your shadow self but you don't uh, push it away you 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 learn you fall in love with yourself and you accept every part of yourself so you become balanced um, that was very good teachings for me because I had cancer I I had a uterus, uh, the cervical cancer, stage one, and the doctor asked me if I wanted to wait, cut, burn, what did I want to do? I said, I'm going to wait because I'm going to beat this on my own. I know how. And it wasn't just diet. It was also how you think. It's how you feel. And it's basically talking to your DNA, talking to your body, and it will listen to you. you got to create that mind-body connection to be able to get that healing you need. So um, I'm very, I love philosophy. I'm very optimistic, maybe a little idealistic at times, but uh, I love learning about anything. So that's me. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Nice to meet you in this way. And we have Zach, uh, Zane left. Do you want to speak? Was that me? Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, would you like to speak about anything? Uh, yeah, definitely. I uh, I met Mikiko just this um, this winter. It was actually on New Year's Eve at a party, a New Year's Eve party, um, and I was sort of in the middle of going through a, a personal transition that began with Steve Greer. So I think it's cool that you got to see him talk. Um, and so then I, I kind of, he, he kind of cracked the door open in terms of investigating, or reinvestigating, I should say, the UFO and ET phenomenon. And what I, the conclusion I came to by uh, reading his autobiography was that there's a, a sort of um, necessary spiritual evolution that comes along with that transition, that comes along with sort of... Um, fighting the establishment, so to speak. And I thought that was just so cool that from the material, I arrived at the spiritual, you know, and that there are people who, who are working on both fronts. Um, so that's kind of how I got here and on this wavelength. And since then, it's just been this exponential increase in information flows. So I feel like I'm in a whole whole new headspace, um, and it's an exciting time, so I'm glad to, to join you guys and learn what I can. Wonderful. Thanks for sharing, and nice to meet you in this capacity. All right. Uh, I think we are done. Michelle uh, gra uh, gracefully skipped your turn. Um, I think we, we don't have anyone else to... Right, we we we. Well, you did, yes, you did, everything said. Everybody, did. okay. All right. So I think I want to uh, go with new information, and um, before I start with uh, lots of new information, I want to give you some basics. How about that? Some basics about DNA. And for that, I need to share my screen, and that should be easy. Google Hangouts, this one. So we will have many, many of me, I guess. Let me see what happens. Yep. All right. So that's where we are. And let's start with uh, searching for DNA. And you will get lots of images. I see images. Can you see the images? Yes. Hey. Yes. And what's wrong with those images? It's all not real DNA. It's some sort of simplified uh, designer modified DNA. Very few of them are real. So, so this uh, can you see? Uh, I will show you this one. Where is it? This one. Can you see it? 
Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that that's more or less correct uh, image of DNA. So it is a right turn spiral, double spiral. So it's a right turn, like if you raise your right hand, then um, then that would show the direction of the spiral. Right hand goes forward, and then you kind of twist, you just for, fall on your right hand. And if it's left-handed, it's not from Earth. It's some imaginary DNA. And I believe even aliens have right-handed, right-handed DNA. So that's kind of our our reality has that one. Now, and most of like lots of the DNA is like here, the first one, left-handed, not real. The uh, this one is left-handed. So the, the painters, the designers, they don't really care, you know, if they just uh, show the real DNA or not so real. So this looks very scientific, but it's not right. It's left-handed. You see, left, it turns out the wrong direction. This one is pretty, but it's a wrong uh, step. It's like very stretched. Maybe it exists, but it's left-handed, and it's a uh, wrong, wrong, wrong thing. Like here, what's wrong with this DNA? Can you see this? Is it visible? Can you see it? That's good. That's yeah, good. so what's wrong with it? First, it's left-handed spiral. And second, the steps there are equal. And they are not really equal. The true DNA, let me, so this one is real. This one is true. So this one, uh, has, it should have, have about 10 steps of this basis bef be between the turns. So one turn is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, about 10. So 10 steps is good. And um, I'll go back. Um, I need to show Excuse you something. Excuse me, Max. When they say a strand, what are they referring to? Uh, they use it with different meanings. So let me show you. Um, uh, so this is the most classical image of DNA, right? And uh, sometimes, like typically when people say strands, they mean these blue ribbons. Blue, blue ribbons are strands. So it's two stranded, two strands connected to each other. It's called, uh, uh, strands is used as one of the linear molecule, a chain of uh, nucleotides. And two of those strands form a double helical DNA. But when people who don't really kind of are not careful about the words or don't know the words, they can use, you know, a DNA when it's combined. It's also like a linear sort of, if you look from afar, it's a linear spiral. And they turn the double, to name the double stranded DNA as one strand, basically. They combine them together in one. And sometimes people confuse their DNA molecule with chromosomes, and then they call the chromosome the strands. For them, it's all equal. And some of them uh, confuse the DNA with protein, and it's you know they, they, it's all for them the same. So, so it's not the same thing. DNA and protein are two different things. DNA is one chemical, and protein is a series of other chemicals. All right. So DNA is made out of four uh, letters, four monomers, and then they are A, T, G, and C, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. And usually there are two strands which are close to each other, and there is a place for a third strand. Can you see it here? There is like a, a so-called small groove and big groove, or minor groove and... Uh, about major groove. Uh, so you see the space for the third strand here? It's kind of very mysterious space. It's always there. And sometimes it's occupied with proteins. Sometimes it's occupied with um, water. And maybe it is occupied with uh, DNA or RNA, sometimes small pieces. But usually not. Usually not. So it's a very mysterious space place and I don't really know what is there but I think it is there for a reason maybe there is something happening like molecules of water may be structured and stand there forming some sort of a laser crystal which uh, which could uh, uh, transmit light 
which which I don't know. It's it's kind of a fresh hypothesis. I don't know if it's true. But but this DNA is you know we work with it daily, so we really know it's 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 of that structure. It's right-handed spiral. It's double helix, and it's pretty we're pretty confident about its structure. Any questions so far? Yes. Where's the third space you're talking about? Yep, major groove uh, space for the third uh, strand. Yes. So is it on any one of those crossbars with the AT or the G? Or is it uh, like on the corner as it turns? Oh, you don't see it? You no. See the, 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 um, can you see my cursor? No? Yes. So when we, so the the space is right here. When you, we see the cursor, my my uh, the arrow of my cursor. Can you see it? It's in the black. <laughs> what do you mean in the black? It's not on the map. Not again. on the picture. <laughs> ah, hold on. Okay. Should, should be able to fix it somehow. Hold on. Um. So. Do I, do this? I, I know how to do it. Hold on. Okay, I can do it. Technology is okay. The third strand is right here. See, that's the place for the third strand. See that? No, because now I don't see your mouse. Sorry. So. Oh, you cannot see it. Okay. No. So maybe you can explain it with words. Is it? No, yeah, I would just play with buttons better. I, I will use the technology to fix it. Hold on. Stop. <laughs> oh, it's fun. How to you know, share the full screen? I can do it. Start screen share. Now I go back here. I know print screen. Blah blah blah. And now you should be able to okay. see it. Hold on. Right here. That's the strand. Can you see it now? Oh. Okay. That's the place for the. Okay. For the. Gotcha. Third. Okay. Strand. It would fit right here perfectly right. in the major groove. You see, okay. two strands leave a space, and right. the true DNA always have that third, space mysterious third empty space. Okay. Thank you. And the nucleotides are here, like that would be G, that would be C by colors, you see? Okay. Now let's look at these nucleotides. They are beautiful. They are wonderful. So nucleotides tied pairs. And look at images. Ah, oh, they're so beautiful. That is it. Uh, that's how they look. And one of them, how do again? I will draw on the, on the screen right here. And one of them would be. It would be this one's called purine, and this would be either A or G. They have two beautiful kind of circles, if you can call it circle. And again, it's a pentagon and hexagon, wonderful shapes. And this would be pyrimidine, and it would be T or C. And you know, the very the difference between T and C is very small. So basically, the pair is either A T or G C. So it's either A T. They pair together and they hold in a beautiful fashion. They hold with hydrogen bonds, or they called G and C, and they always pair. So that holds the pair, the two strands together. These pairs. And now I need to show you the stack of no. Any questions so far? Good. I'll show you the stack of nucleotides of uh, base pairs. Are these the structure, is this what the structure looks up that makes up the the two strands or the three strands or the ones that go across or all of it? No, two so strands. That structure is here. So you see this double helix? Mm -hmm. uh, those nucleotides are print screen. 
all right here so it would be you see it's a long one it would be the yeah. g with, or a so it's g c and this long one would be either a or g so i pick a g a t and they hold hold the strands together okay thanks and they are responsible for wonderful coupling of the strands so that's when the cells divide one strand goes to one cell, one other strand goes to another cell, and this continues duplication of the information. So when you copy the DNA, one strand C, it becomes G in the second strand, and that makes it like a Xerox machine. Very precise, very precise, perfect Xerox machine, copying one strand to another. So to duplicate, you basically do double, double the DNA, copy it, make a copy, and then they separate into di like different the chromosomes are separated into different yeah. cells okay and that's well studied we are absolutely sure in our reality it is absolutely true so these base stacks here you can see they're very pretty and they form a crystal they really do a liquid crystal linear crystal so let me see more pictures of it. Nucleus side pairs. And then stack of base pairs. Okay. I want it pretty. This one is pretty. This one is pretty. Oh, this is beautiful. So that's the shape of this crystal. You see? That is the structure. The green, the green one. You see it? And hello? Anyone there? Yes. OK. So you see the green balls? Yes. So the outside is the outside backbone. It's called backbone. And inside are those base pairs, A, T, G, C. And let me print. Uh, let me sh so, so, so these are wonderful. Uh, so this is a liquid crystal. That's, that's the one. And we know for sure it is a semiconductor, so it conducts electricity in the DNA. It's real. It's absolutely proven. Uh, the hypothesis is it also conducts light. It hasn't been demonstrated yet. It might conduct light, but it is a crystal. It could be a laser. And it's very likely to conduct sound. So it is uh, a nice crystallic form which can be conducting things within the cell. Any questions so far? So it, it conducts our electromagnetic energy or just electricity? Um, all right, so a little bit of physics. Uh, electromagnetic is the waves usually, the wave where electric field is converted to magnetic field and back. Let me show you. It's important. You, when you talk about light, we really know what it is. OK. so. So how do you say electromagnetic wave? Okay. And here it is. The first picture is perfect. So that's the image. So when we talk about the fields, uh, electric field is converted to magnetic field and back. So we have electric is like pinkish, and uh, magnetic is bluish. And they kind of create each other. And they go hand in hand in two different, in two parallel, uh, perpendicular planes. So what is electric field? Electric field is the one which pulls the charges, like, uh, like the, I need words. When you electri uh, electrify your hair and uh, the things that attract, that's attraction between the charges. It's electric charge. So electrons and absence of electrons are charges. And electric current uh, is when electrons move. So, But when the electrons move, they don't create the magnetic field. When they accelerate or turn, it, which is also a form of acceleration, that's when they create the magnetic field. And magnetic field is something which is like uh, the Earth has magnetic field, the magnets have magnetic field, the phones produce magnetic field. And uh, when you make a vibration of either electric field or magnetic field, 
this vibration creates this electromagnetic wave, which uh, either can be a standing wave, standing in a place, or propagates, and it pro propagates with the speed of light, whatever, in, in the vacuum, whatever uh, frequency is, it's always propagates with the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second. So is that what we use when we do Reiki? Wonderful question. I'm confident that it is not. I'm confident that that way which we uh, use in Reiki is beyond the physical space. Electromagnetic is still physical, and Reiki is certainly beyond the physical. It is not measurable by uh, modern devices. At least, the, you know, you can buy the device. Uh, well, not yet. Device which measures. Sometimes some devices might be able to measure, but I don't think it's it's very real. It would be, it's a different topic. It, so most of our devices cannot measure. The physicists, you know, if you give them $10, $10 million, they won't be able to measure the Reiki energy. Um, so that's the simple answer. How do I know? Um, very simple. Let, let me show you my myself. Hold on. Stop here, and can you see me? All right, so when I send the Reiki energy, it takes me a little meditation to activate my hands. So I do, I invite it, and it starts flowing, and it flows kind of with meditation, it flows better. And then I move my hand farther, and I still can feel this ray of energy hitting my, uh, my palm, and I can feel a little blow on my on my hand. It's uh, it's I can feel it because I am conscious, right? Now, and I reach that level of vibration. Now, it's it behaves like electromagnetic ray. But if I go underwater, which I did for experimentation, by definition, the water would change the direction, would change the angle of that radiation, and it doesn't. I know for sure. I did many experiments. If Reiki goes through clothing, it goes through metal, through the walls, it goes the long distance, which I experienced on myself, and electromagnetic energy doesn't do that. Whatever frequencies, even gamma rays, they, you know, they don't go that far, and the ray usually fades with a very fast. It's uh, the intensity of normal electromagnetic ray fades uh, reverse proportional to square of distance, meaning if you have uh, one foot, it would be one energy. If it would be two feet, it would be one fourth. If it would be four feet, it would be one sixteen. So it fades really fast. And Reiki doesn't. I can go far from the patient, and the effect is almost the same. When you put the hands on, and there is sensation, that there is a more effect because there is a feedback, basically. You feel them, they feel you. There is a unity which is through sensation, through touch, through touch. But but it doesn't mean that the Reiki energy is different. It's just additional consciousness connection, which makes it stronger. So the answer is no. It's not physical. It's not electromagnetic. It is... Difficult differently, I like the term ethereal, and that is the term which is used by many scientists. Uh, there is There are also names for a thin energy, uh, zero-point energy. Um, Quantum energy? Yeah. Um, you know, physicists wouldn't like the, the term. but no. can... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, quantum mechanics is a place here, a big way, but in a different way. The word is not just... It's uh, it's not ready it's a, it's a misuse. Quantum is a particle, right? Or a wave. They they did this. They did the study. A it's either quantum or a wave. Quantum okay. is the particle by definition. Or quantum theory is a theory about tiniest particles and how they switch back and forth. And in quantum theory, there are uh, basically, the idea that particles can link, so when or link together, and then when you separate them, the carry, they they still connected to each other through information. So, yeah, quantum entanglement. Yeah. Yeah, entanglement. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, so you have to pronounce little more than quantum. 
<laughs> but it's okay. It's up to you how, how to use. It. I like a serial. A serial sounds good uh, to me. And I, I just kind of you know we use the terms which other use. I, I don't want to invent new terms. That, you know, it's not necessary to invent new terms at the moment. All right. So um, I'm still here working on the on the DNA. DNA. So that's the first level. Now let's look at how do you call it? I need to show you the screen, sorry. Show you the screen again. Uh, full screen, share screen, full screen, share, screen, share. So I want to show you the, how do you call it? Um, uh, DNA chroma, chromatin. So the keyword is chromatin. And here is a beautiful picture. Let me pick the classical one. I guess this one is good. Wonderful. That's a classical picture of chromatin packaging. How do you screen? full screen view? Full screen. This looks good. Okay. So can you see it? I need a feedback. Can yes. you see it? Yes. All right. Yep. So the, the top, you are familiar, it's a double helix drawn by a professional scientist or supervised by a professional scientist. It's two strands together, right-handed helix with about 10 uh, bases per turn. Do you see it? Let me print, let me show it. 10 bases. Okay, 10 bases. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You see, it? it's about right ten bases. I think it's ten and a half. I mean, it depends how coiled the DNA is, but it should be about ten bases with the default most popular structure. All right, so that's double helix. Now that double helix has to be packed in chromosomes, and the chromosome is that thing at the bottom. And it's pretty big. It's 1.4 micron or 1400 nanometers. It's pretty big. It's um, you know you can see them within the cell with a microscope. You cannot see double helix with regular microscope, but uh, with um, regular microscope you can see chromosomes. They don't always they are not they are not always visible in the cell. They are visible only during cell divisions. So the cell basically unpacks the DNA. Mm, how do you describe it? Say you brought home your you brought home your homework, you take it out of your backpack and put different pieces on, on the floor and kind of work on your homework. It's all unpacked. But if you need to copy everything and then divide it, so you need to copy, you go go to the Xerox, make a copy of all your homework and create a new backpack and then you kind of separate them into different cells. So that's what uh, the cell does. It condenses the DNA into individual chromosomes and then separates copies to one side and another side of the cell and then kind of separates. So it's in the cell division. I guess I have to show it. There is no other way. Are you familiar with that picture of... Uh, 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 cell division, chromosome cell division, chromosomes cell division. Let me just. Uh -huh. I don't see a pretty image, but um, I guess it would do. All right, so in the first picture, the DNA is right here. It is sort of unpacked. You see? And then um, DNA is condensed into chromosomes here. And then they duplicate it. And um, here they are separated. And then the cell separates. And the chromosomes kind of separate into different cells. So that's how all the life on Earth functions. Wow. 
All right, so DNA is absolutely important. It is a program, it is the code which is duplicated every cell division. All right, going back to the idea of uh, chromatin. So, the idea of chromatin. So, the DNA is very little, two nanometers, and then it's very long, it's about two meters per cell. And it has to be packed in this little chrom chromosome, right? Can you see it? So the difference between DNA and chromosome is that DNA is basically a substance. And when you talk about DNA, you think about uh, double helix. But then that substance, the double helix, is packed into the chromosome, where, which is like tightly, tightly packed. Two meters in a very small volume. All right? So now, it is packed through process. So that is well known, that process. It is DNA is packed into the kind of its uh, roles. How do you define it? Can you name it? Mm. I know it's in Russian. I just don't know English. Like the knitting, you put the knitting onto the cylinder. How do you call it? When you do the knitting, the sewing, the thread, you thread the thread, uh, turn the thread around the cylinder, how do you call it? A spool? Is that yeah, a spool, you're... exactly, the spool. So the these nucleosomes are the spools. They are made out of protein. And interestingly, DNA is charged negatively. It has extra electrons and it is charged negatively. And these spools are called, are charged positively. So they love each other. They they kind of um, attract the DNA. When they mix them together, they roll around themselves naturally. The DNA just loves to roll around them. So they come together in a beautiful structure. Now, that is known, well established. We can map it, blah, blah, blah. We can measure it. Lots of labs do, are doing that, mapping it. What is new, which is my hypothesis, not yet proven, is that when a current, electric current, goes through the DNA, electricity, I believe it could create a magnetic field. So there would be a magnetic field right here. So that is new, and... Um, it's it, it's yet to be proven, but I think we it can work as an electric magnet. And if it starts uh, oscillating, if you put elect, uh, alternated current through the DNA, naturally, if it exists there, then it would create magnetic processes like vortexes or electromagnetic things. And then it would become a transformer between the electromagnetic field and the sound. So it would create sound waves and electromagnetic waves in the cell, in the nucleus. It's still a hypothesis. All right, so what happens next? Next, we have those packed in a zigzag structure, which is called um, 30 nanometer fiber. And that's, I think, it is the main antenna, the main resonator of the, one of the main resonators of the DNA structures. I love it. I think the secret is there, how it is packed and how the sequence within this DNA becomes a wave. I think that that structure creates a very interesting wave. And I believe it might create vortexes of electromagnetic energy, very focused vortexes, uh, which then would somehow interact with the etheric field. Yet to be proven, yet to be studied, it's, it's still a theory, a hypothesis. Then those are known to be packed in uh, this structure, which doesn't have even a name, 300 nanometer zigzaggy snake. Looks like a wave, yeah. Yes, yeah, wave. Uh, lots of loops, and those are even packed even more. I don't think the la the, pre the the this one is characterized well, and then it's formed in the nucle in a, in a chromosome which is visible. So, so lots to be discovered here. We we can work very easily with double helix with the initial sequence of it. Uh, 
uh, we can map the nucleosomes, they're called strings, uh, beads on the string with the spools and uh, thread. And 13 nanometer fiber, uh, there are a few labs that study it. It's, it's um, not well studied and, and people don't understand the importance of it because they don't understand yet the importance of the vibrations of the DNA. So, and the, and the chromosomes are well studied. People look at them mostly for genetic defects and for birth defects and stuff like that. They kind of look at them and see if all of them look pretty and, and study them pretty well. Practic for practical reasons. All right. No. So, no. Yes. No, sorry. Uh, it's so interesting, Max, because looking at the top ones when you showed that, immediately it made me think about motor windings, right? The way you're saying a spool of a very thin filament, and then mm -hmm. down below the the chromosomes remind me very much of an antenna, um, sort of a, a classical like TV antenna or something. Um, so it's, it's both of those are very interesting if we're talking about electromagnetic energy. Absolutely. Um, the the condensed ones, yes. Uh, but remember, the condensed one exists only a small part of the life of the cell. In most most part of the life of the cell, it is decondensed. It's kind of a messy, un invisible solution where you cannot really map map much. Its DNA is fills the nucleus. Let me show you. Okay, thank you. Uh, hold on, I will show you the fish. It's called DNA chromosome, DNA fish. Uh, microscopy. It is uh, beautiful, actually. Actually, that can be shown on uh, on video because people now can show how it happens in real time. But basically, so these are uh, condensed chromosomes with some parts fluorescently labeled. Okay, how to get out of here? Does let me out? Strange, isn't it? Okay, all right, and um, yeah, they, yeah, this is actually very representative. That's when it is decondensed. Uh, and uh, you can label different parts of the genome, but you can see the chromosomes. It's um, nucleus. So the nucleus of the cell is full of DNA. It is somewhat structured, but not. It's kind of not as structured as chromosomes. So I think the resonance happens even there. But when you look at the videos of what happens in the nucleus, how these things move, you see they move with certain pattern, but it's not crystalline pattern. It's very fluid. So so it's still yet to be discovered how the resonance shapes things there and how things behave there. It's not um, simple to prove that there is a vibration and resonance. But you know, when you look at things moving in the cell, it reminds me like a city at night. Uh, cars move. Everyone has its own purpose. You can see you know, when you fly over the city, you see the cars moving. Everyone has its own purpose. And some cars move slow. Some cars move moves very fast. And some like police trucks and and uh, emergency trucks um, go opposite to traffic. And everybody lets them through. You know that's what happens within the cell. Uh, every component of it seems to be intelligent and moving, you know, about its own business with very nice precision and uh, direction. So, lots to be discovered. Um, any questions more on this topic? Any more questions on this topic? So. Alus, yeah, alus. So the DNA sequence uh, contains uh, uh, unique parts, and it's three billion nucleotides per cell. Per so our genome is three billion nucleotides, so three billion bases, and out of it, about fifty percent are unique sequences. Basically, it, if you if you know the sequence, uh, you map it on the genome, it would happen only once. Like most of the genes we know are unique. And there is also lots of repetitive parts. And repetitive parts comprise about 50% of the genome. And 
my favorite sequence called Alu is present there in million copies. And I expect, my hypothesis is that the Alu is the vibrational antenna of the genome. Basically, it has certain structure and it would make the network of the vibration in, in the nucleus. And there are a few other sequences like line one, also about a million times per genome and some of others. And say ALU comprises about 10% of each of, of the genome of each cell. So I think it's a very important sequence. So we need to study it. It's not well studied though. It's studied but not as much as others. All right, um, so resonances, obviously we look for resonances. You know the resonance, right? Oh, the reson I will switch to my image. Hold on, how do I do this? Stop. Hello there. So the resonance, when one thing is vibrating, the other one starts resonating with the same frequency. Also, it's called entrainment. When one is vibrating with a very strong a uh, forceful uh, energy, the other one would vibrate with the same energy, even if even if it doesn't want to. So people can entrain others, or the music can entrain you in a certain vibration. So the influence of music works through entrain entrainment. And the resonance is just when two things are, so entrainment is forceful resonance, and resonance is just when two or more things synchronize. All right, so I believe the resonance is important. Uh, there is the idea of holographic, holographic body or etheric holographic body, and there is a hypothesis that the DNA creates that holographic body. So that the cell, when it is in the body, it knows its coordinate by referring itself to the holographic image of the body, to ideal image, and behaves accordingly. And uh, when the sickness comes, it first occurs in the holographic field, and then it translates or materializes, manifests, that's the word, manifests in, in the physical body. So that's why Reiki works, because we don't work on the physical body, we work on the holographic body. We work with the DNA, we restore the vibrational patterns. And then we, and then that translates in health. The pain goes away and stuff. So that idea, I think, is very strong. Again, it's it's uh, an idea. It's not science, scientifically verifiable, because we work something with something which is unmeasurable, which is etheric field. I don't believe it is electromagnetic. I think there is electromagnetic vibration there. I think there is sound vibration, but when they meet around the DNA in those vortexes, when they kind of focus, they transcend the physical reality, they go to ethereal reality. And that's where the magic happens. So we still need to understand the whole thing. And I think it's understandable. There is lots of experiments to be done. But uh, now we go to the area which is beyond experimentation, at least beyond that simple experimentation. Any questions so far? No questions. I was just um, thinking that uh, bead on a string, that picture uh -huh. you had earlier, and you had said that the middle of it was um, it was positive, like the yes, yes, charge the, the it spools were positive. Yes, they called nucleosomes. Yes. Okay, and then the next picture after that, there was a whole bunch of spools all put together in series and parallel at the same time, like when you put batteries on yes. that way to have yes, more power. Yes, it's called fifteen millimeter fiber. Yes. Okay. So that's what I was wondering. I, I said, geez, electronics has the same basis when it puts batteries together to create more of a charge, you know, to have more power going through. It's connected in series yes, and yes. parallel at the same time. The human, we're, we're mimicking our human body when we're creating these electronic things. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So another uh, idea of sickness is that DNA... Mm, I guess I will show, tell you in a word before because pictures are just slow. So DNA can be modified. Uh, the typical modification of the DNA is when the basis, the ba one of the bases, one of four bases, you have A, G, C, and T. One of them is C, 
it can be methylated. So four bases, only one can have a methyl group, a little tiny methyl group, which is CH3. So it can be attached, and it's called methyl C. So we have four bases and one modified base. And lots of our DNA is methylated, and it's called epigenetic modification. So AGCT is genetics, and on top of genetics, epi is epigenetics, and this methyl sits there, and it's a punctuation mark, and usually it says that this part of the genome ought to be sleeping, doing nothing. So methylation usually means turn off that. So when you turn off too much, you become old, or you become tired, or you just turn off things and uh, slow down. And actually, the process of unmethylation is very limited. You basically don't unmethylate. If you turn off something, it's, it's off usually. It's really hard to unmethylate things in the cell. There is no easy process for that. So methylation is easy. Unmethylation is not easy. Methylation is great for fighting cancer because you turn off the cancer, turn off the things which are suspicious, and they just sleep. So lots of humans have lots of cancer seeds everywhere from ultraviolet, for example, and they just sleep in there. It's proven. It's well known by med medical professions. So, so turning off things is good. It's another level of controlling and regulating things. The cause that it turned on in the first place, you know what I mean? Like if you have these sleeping cells, like cancer cells, and the cause that caused them to awaken in the first place, uh, that's another area. It could be stress, could be your body's not pH balanced, it could be, you know, it could be different Absolutely. things. Yeah. Uh, yes. I don't know if this is true or not, but I was just reading that um, sound can change your DNA as well. Uh -huh. Sound frequency. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that. I, you know, I welcome any input. I, I'm kind of researching that area now. Sound, ultrasound, that's infrasound. Would be nice. Sound uh, and color hear. are supposed to be um, together and do mm -hmm. have a huge impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, much of that is uh, serious science. Much of that is hard to reproduce. It's kind of um, spiritual science. So, so again, it's. Uh, you know, going into detail is important. But what I wanted to mention in response to this, how what is causing cancer? There is a theory again of sickness being a negative energy attacking your uh, etheric body or your holographic body. And I think it's pretty strong. It's very convincing that bacteria. Now the mainstream science discovered that. I think I heard. I didn't read the paper. But I heard that uh, they understood that it's not sufficient to have one bacteria, one bacterium, to infect you, or 10, or 100. Sometimes the critical mass is about maybe 10,000. So this 10, that, that is very interesting. So there is a collective behavior of bacteria which is needed to reach a critical mass to get the infection going. Yes. I, I study that a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. It's a called quorum sensing. Quorum sensing. You can't just have a one, but they could be in a sleeping, but uh -huh. then having a mass, like you said, a certain number, they begin to communicate sensing. It's a quorum sensing, the field of energy produced, and then they all activate it mm -hmm. simultaneously and it cause the effect. If you type it, quorum sensing, there's a okay. the right. research is done. Okay, go type it. So, yes, thank you. Yes, uh, so the idea is that there is collective behavior. And, uh, you know, for mainstream scientists, the first hypothesis is always chemistry. So maybe bacteria collectively produce some chemical which helps them to wake up. Uh, or maybe they monitor how many of them are there and they say, you know, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. All right, there is thousand of us or ten thousand. We are ready to attack. And then they say, All right, go collectively. And the second idea is that it is vibrational. 
So, and it's very popular in Russia, that idea. That there is some vibration that is which is produced by the bacteria, which can break a hole in your vibrational field. You have like protective protective uh, shields and uh, they kind of break the hole with their energy and then they kind of squeeze their ethereal program, DNA program, ethereal DNA program into our DNA program or they violate our holographic field or trick it into allowing them to grow there. Wasn't, so there, a, wasn't there a scientist in the 1930s, Mr. Royal Rife? Or something like that, and he yes, had discovered absolutely. that every bacteria had its own frequency, and he could use this device that would cure cancer, cure ailments, just by pointing the frequency at that bacteria, basically to deactivate it or something like that. Royal yeah. Rife. Like yeah, I think it is classified. I think they, you know, the the military or whatever underground military kind of. Took full control over the technology. They hunt. They still hunt anyone who has a machine, and they prohibit all the. You know, they close all the research and publications on that. So it was really hard to go in that direction. But yes, that's 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 the idea is there. It's really hard to find any proof that it's real, but uh, the idea is there, and it would be nice to have uh, simple experimental mod experiments on model organisms, basically to verify that. Yes, absolutely. Royal Rife, yes. Very little is like very little scientific proof is there. It's more like um, idea yet. Again, with the cancer cells, the same idea that maybe they produce certain disturbance in a, in a, in our holographic field, which which tricks it into allowing allowing them to grow. Basically, it's, it tricks the immune system f from shutting them down. Another idea I had, it's still fresh, I don't know what to do with it, but basically the fact that human Homo sapiens extinguished all other primates which have similar genomes, maybe because we were fighting for etheric holographic field, so collectively humanity creates our own field, and if other primates exist in that field with the different genomes, they kind of interfere, violate it, negatively affect it. So maybe it was uh, fighting not only on uh, physical level, but also on ethereal level. So we didn't want any other close primates to exist. The monkeys have survived because they're pretty far. But, uh, you know, Neanderthals and, and others, they somehow they were extinguished. It really made like our ancestral warriors angry when they, fly, they saw some others from other species and they kind of extinguished them one way or another. Max? Yes? Uh, you've ever heard of the study, and it's proven scientifically, that every seven years you are physically a brand new person because every cell in your body has died and regenerated a new one. Uh, yes, yes. It's about, yeah. I would say, go ahead. So I, it, an idea came to mind when I was reading about that. I said, well, if they have a, a lifespan, like every cell has a lifespan, just like every human being has a lifespan, then what if every cell in our body had its own consciousness? They had a job to do. And just like in the masses out there, if you start an idea that spreads like wildfire but it's it's not good for society it's kind of mm -hmm. like how a cancer cells grow and then convinces the next cell beside them come on join me and it's like a revolution in your body <laughs> and then Absolutely, it's yeah. it's how do you you know like, like my visualization my meditations was to send an internal psychologist to go and speak to my cells and bring them back to the right way <laughs> <laughs> it was a funny meditation, but it it worked. That was one aspect of the human being that I that I helped in healing the cancer, because we got most. We have four aspects. We got the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, or eth ethereal, like you were saying. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, cancer in human society. It's like 
Bolsheviks in Russia, right, who created the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, extinguished most of the body. It survived, but barely. Or fascism or something like that. Yeah, fascism is a typical cancer. It was obvious, it, obvious to everyone that it was negative, but uh, somehow it tricked everyone to go in within, except, Ch except Churchill. All right. Um, it goes with your idea too that uh, the the cancer cells they kind of camouflage themselves with this shell, this protein shell, yes, and, uh -huh. and made the body uh, like the immune system wouldn't attack the cancer because it made the body believe. Like in one study, it made the body believe that you were pregnant, so it wasn't gonna uh -huh. touch that part of you. It wasn't mm -hmm. gonna destroy it because it was new life growing inside of you. But what the immune system did not know is that these cells, they could grow without oxygen. They could grow with the, there's two types of sugars. There's a natural one and there's the, the, the one that's synthetic. And one is like uh, charged positive. The other one's charged negative. And uh, one is good. It's complementary to your body, but the other one is not. So that's how the cancer grows if you put all that synthetic sugar in your body. That I... I read a lot of, on the cancer because I had it, so I, of course I got interested in it. So <laughs> The idea that cancer tricks the body to think that it is a pregnancy, I think it's a great idea. So it's already in mainstream, people already know it? Pardon me? Is, it, is this idea already mainstream, it's already published? It is talked about on, um, it's, I'm not, sh yes, actually yes, there was doctors talking about their theories, yes, it was uh, um, published doctors, yes. I like it. I think it's it's about right, at least for some cancer. I think it's about right. Yeah. Uh, when you say uh, the body replaces all the cells every certain number of years, it's, uh, it's most of the cells, but not all of the cells. There are cells which are quickly uh, being recycled and there are cells which are slowly being recycled. There are germ cells which live, you know, for the all fertile life. So you, you know, we, we keep the germ cells, like our flora and our intestines. No, the germ ones are the sexual ones for which oh, okay. create our progenitors uh, for the children. Oh. oh, okay, okay. And also there there are uh, stem cells which, uh, you know, they they are not being replaced very fast. They are very kind of kept protected. Packed, even uh, radiation don't doesn't affect them much, so so they become used once in a while. Like I don't know the example of that, but maybe if you had some sort of seeds, which you would uh, then make your crops out of the seeds, you would keep your stock seeds very protected in the fridge, in the fridge, and then take a little bit, and for this year you would multiply them, and then for next year would we multiply them. Some, like a slow release system when you need it. <laughs> yeah, so I know the blood, the blood cancer, uh, uh, all the blood in your body is uh, descends from one stem cell every four years. So people who, like the doctors who work with the blood cancer, they say, you know, if you survive long enough with that population of cells, you know, you wait for next four year period, maybe next progenitor cell, next stem cell will be healthy and you'll be good again. So that's that's an in, was an interesting observation I learned from, from, from that. So so that's another example. Okay. Um I want to switch gears to the next topic, but please go ahead if you have more questions. Uh, I actually had a well, just something I wanted to bring up on this whole topic of um frequencies and everything, is um, I recently learned from a conference speaker who is going to the Global Pyramid Conference that he, um, <clears throat> through his research, discovered that pyramids hold the 192 natural frequencies that are needed in life that align with all the chakra systems of the body and the world and everything, the universe, um, and that that is one of the reasons why when you put living organisms or crops or whatever it may be in a pyramid, 
and especially near the top of the pyramid, it actually helps to heal because it is reintroducing the proper frequency that helps all of life, <laughs> essentially. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that in there because I feel like that knowledge in and of itself um, is going to be huge for our collective advancement, um, especially for the medical industry, becoming what it needs to be to support us um, <clears throat> globally. And and with all of this energy healing and um, and everything, it's like, because I recently healed myself from Lyme disease with energy healing, energy clearing, and that's the only reason I'm like doing any of this stuff or even in this webinar right now is because uh, I came across that protocol. So it's like this is our future and it's just very interesting um, to kind of relate all of these topics. So when you're talking about DNA and everything and the, and the frequencies, are, it's fascinating to me. So I was wondering if you had any um, ways you wanted to expand upon that with the 192 natural frequencies or the or any of that? Uh, it's a big topic about experiments on pyramids. I would refer everybody to the book by David Wilcock, The Source Field Investigations. He has a big chapter on pyramids. I think it's a great uh, summary. Have you read uh, David Wilcock's book? No, no, I... You should. It's, it's, uh, it's not that long. It's maybe... 50 pages chapter about pyramids and he has very nice summaries and ideas how it works. I worked with one uh, of the experimenters with pyramids and uh, they are able to focus the energy from growing uh, green plants to uh, so in that case I mean they, they, they do it for humans but they also did it for um, some experimental mo uh, they use nematodes as experimental model and and uh, they showed that they survived much longer when they received the focused life energy um, so so I know it's uh, the, there is some some nice experimentation done there um, I wanted to ask you again what was like you mentioned the um, protocol for uh, Lyme disease we used to clean your what was that protocol what did you what did you do um, so there's a lady <clears throat> named Candy Vandewalker it's Candy with a K I coincidentally came across her protocol um, after delving into conspiracy research and everything when I first started awakening late last year so it's been very quick um, and she was talking about how she had this terrible Morgellons disease uh, nanotechnology yada yada I don't want to go into it right now but it, it is also related to Lyme disease and um, I think it's all spiritual tests which I guess everything is but anyway she was able she almost died and she was led to this information and all it is is you are taking the frequencies of the words because words, thoughts, um, everything, even written words, spoken words hold a frequency and so the protocol is you simply have to um, uh, print out words of the topic you're trying to clear yourself from or think it or say it whatever works and then hold them in your hand tap your spine up and down about um, eight times is what she recommends it doesn't have to be exact and that's just turning on your central nervous system to quote download the frequencies into your body and then you just have to know that this is going to help clear you of these frequencies it, it it's basically just clearing the chakra systems of blockages of sensitivities of these energies um, so yeah you hold this paper in your hand or think the word or hold the item tap your spine up and down and then you do acupressure in a circle around your body it takes about three minutes and I did that three days in a row and the, the fourth day um, after doing the bacteria clearing for Lyme disease and all these other bacteria that are common, commonly hurting a lot of us, uh, I, I woke up with no fibromyalgia pain for the first time in years and um, changed my whole life and I've been better ever since. Now, 
Um, you know, it's it's something that is good to do every once in a while. I'm not saying that like doing it once helps you helps permanent, but I mean it has changed my whole life. And so it's um, you can just search for energy clearing protocol on Google. Uh, if you type the name in Candy with a K, it comes up right away. Her her uh, website is on a call to action dot com. Uh, I'll post it in the side chat, but it's it's amazing. So I got it. I got it. Yeah. Um, it works for everything, not just Lyme disease. You know, it's food allergies, cancer. I mean, um, it's it's a step in the right direction to helping your body heal itself. She's not saying it's the end all be all. You know, you obviously have to have proper nutrition and all that good stuff. But this is huge for helping people start to heal and it's what helped me so I know it it's able to help others too. So the key words are, are confirmations, affirmations, tapping and acupressure, right? This is yeah. the tools yeah. which are combined in the new system which uh, what yep. is the name of the system? Um, energy healing protocol or energy clearing protocol mm -hmm. they're the same thing she's labeled them both um, and yeah, it combines quantum physics with acupressure and it helps clear your body of sensitivities and blockages of energy that's holding you back from achieving your dreams. Thank you. And now I wanted to switch to the next topic. I, I, I'm running out of time so I will be brief, but um, I think I just um, learned new stuff and I wanted to share it. It's related in many ways. It's relevant in many ways and it brings things together. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm, how is the sound? Can you hear me fine? Uh, so I'm listening to lectures by a uh, Russian teacher Manosov, M-O-N-O-S-O-V, Manosov, uh, and it's on YouTube free in Russian. And um, he is teaching a traditional ancient, mostly Atlantean course on magic. And it, it, I learned a lot from that. Basically, he puts together lots of a lot of uh, things in a very harmonious way. So the main core of the teaching is that um, the idea of chakras. Um, and uh, that's where he found my uh, my resonance. It was he defined chakras in a new way, and it made tons of sense. So the chakra, we know seven chakras are uh, from Reiki, yoga, and uh, from light worker teachings. It's everywhere. Chakras, chakras. Mm. And he defined it as a frequency. And that frequency is basically frequency of nerves going from the head to that, that place. And he says that signal, back and forth signal, or vibration goes from the head to the place. Hmm, I have that. Just a second. You are muted, Max, for me. Yeah, Max, the sound went out on your mic. Nothing yet. And now it should be good. There it is. 
All right. Welcome so, back. So mm -hmm. basically, he says the division of chakras into seven levels is artificial. It was done uh, at the ancient times, around the times of Atlantis, before the first destruction of Atlantis. It was a creation of those magicians. They were very advanced, and uh, they created the whole uh, how do you call it? The whole system. This, they call it the created the system. So we have the spine, and the spine was divided into seven areas, and the first area is farthest from the brain, so it takes longer time to for the nervous impulse to go up and down, and that creates the, the longest vibration, the, the slowest. And then it is shorter, and it is shorter, and it is shorter, and it is shorter, and it is shorter. And uh, the highest would be somewhere in the top, right? The crown chakra. So that's why the lowest one is red. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because um, it's still, yeah. Yes. The lowest is red, and uh, actually it goes up to violet. And you know what I learned from another place, violet is actually is switching to the next octave, switching to the next seven. So it's already violet has some of red it, that red comes from the next level violet is close to it it's like blue mixed with the next level red mixed violet all right so the seven number go ahead um i had a quick question about that because the same speaker i i talked of that was talking about the 192 natural frequencies said that one of his theories is that there's apparently two nerves at the end of the tailbone that are their own i don't know if like it's their own separate chakra but they apparently hold that violet um aura as well and that is what completes the circle the the toroid i think it's called have you heard anything about that? It's new, but it sounds interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. He said that he didn't have a whole lot of uh, information to back it up, but that's his belief from what he's come across. So nice. So, con continuing with the with the seven. So the number seven seems to be very artificial. It's picked by. Um, from, not from nature. I don't see any number seven in uh, on Earth in the nature. Yeah, maybe planets, but again, it's really how how do you count the planets? Uh, the days of the week is also artificial, right? The, the uh, you know the God uh, introduced the seven day week, so it is attributed to the Creator, maybe to the Creator of the humanity. So the, the modern humanity has been created with that number seven as a key number. Seven chakras, seven days of the week, um, seven notes in the, in the musical octave. It can be also divided into other parts, right? So, so that's artificial division, which I think went very far, and the whole society was created based on that number seven. Um, so actually you can, depending how you work your Reiki, you can actually maybe tune into intermediate places between the chakras and you would still resonate with the chakra. So it's, it's basically you have been trained to focus on heart chakra and feel it. But if you focus above the heart, you would focus on higher heart. If you focus low, below the heart, you would focus on kind of place between the solar plexus and the heart. So I think it's not as, now I understand, it's not as discreet. Okay, now, based on the chakras, I think it comes from India, but again, to India it comes from Atlantis. There was created a society of castes, castes, castes of different level of the society. And what again Manosov teaches according to Atlantean magic, it is the lower caste, the lower uh, ch chakra is the red chakra. It is the simplest physical existence. And then the first caste of untouchables. What he teaches is that that caste was created in such a way that 
you re you reincarnate in, into this or you incarnate into this cast for the first time. You you start there, and if you are killed, then your experience of life is does not survive. Your soul becomes recycled. So if you complete the cycle, if you grow, if you live your cycle, if you live the life properly, I mean without being killed, I guess fully. You have to learn in each level. You have to learn uh, a certain number of major lessons. Uh, in one teaching, he says it's nine. In Kabbalah, it's nine, and in some other astrology, it's twelve. But basically, you have to learn this major nine or twelve lessons per level. And then, if you graduate, you go to the second level. So untouchables are untouchables because you can you, I mean. In the war, you shouldn't kill them because then they die forever. They are not the soul is not eternal. And if you graduate to the second level, then uh, later y m most of your life experience is conserved even after death. And then you reincarnate. You still keep most of those lessons learned. Now the second level are traders. And uh, the and at the first level is very strong physically and cannot really speak much. For them, the highest achievement, highest magical upgrade would be to learn how to speak. That's that's their goal for the raising to the second level. So the second level is learning for the whole level, the expanding the ability to communicate. And uh, that would be the traders, and that would correspond to our commercials on the television. Tons of information, tons of uh, communication, but not very high quality. So, you know, the salespeople, traditionally, they are of that caste, the sales, especially the car salespeople. Uh, for them, everybody is a friend. Uh -huh. For them, everybody is a friend. And um, all they do, they, they talk. And um, their business is done by by making agreements and uh, going around through tra trading uh, tra trading routes routes. For them, the highest achievement in their level is becoming a fighter. And that's you know the high at the level 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, they go to martial arts lessons, and that's for them is magic. That is something magical that is beyond their level, beyond the vibration of the second chakra, of sexual chakra, of uh, sacral chakra. So the the main color for that chakra would be orange, right? So. Um, so martial arts, uh, that's the maximum that, that they can reach in that level of existence. Then they, they reincarnate as a third caste, which is warriors and government people. So that caste, natural existence for them is fight and hierarchy. And uh, their main way of doing things is just go and take it. So main relation to reality is go and take it. So if uh, the trader, second chakra, meets the resistance, they would negotiate and make a deal. If the warrior feels the resistance, you know, they go and break the wall and make a hole so they can go through. So the door is where they are, they would break the hole in the wall and just go through. So for them, uh, and the warrior is, next chakra is solar plexus, solar plexus chakra, and that would be the color yellow, the sun chakra. And for them, the highest, highest achievement, highest magical learning is the magic already, the magician. So they already understand the, 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 the magic, they believe that magic exists, they, they are superstitious. So the magic is not what they do, but it's what they learn during their lessons on the, on the third level. 
and uh, for highest level of their learning, they go and study esoterics. But when they study esoterics, they study it from the position of the warrior, basically. For them, the whole life is the fight, and they're always in danger. So they learn esoterics in a way that you have to protect yourself, you have to use black magic, you have to f protect yourself from the black magic. So that is pretty dark magic that they study. And the next level, heart chakra and above, is the level of magicians, um, the level of spiritual people, uh, and that's the fourth level. Um, and then uh, the first level of the fourth level is the heart chakra. It is extra sensory abilities, abilities to feel things. And because the heart chakra is connected to because the heart chakra is connected to the hands, that's where you start being able to do Reiki and uh, to feel energy through hands. It's not Reiki yet. And then, um, and then the next level, you are able to 4.2. You're able to actually do something. You can. You're a healer. So next level is a magician, a healer. So that's where you are capable of sending the healing and change other conscious being being through your energy. What is interesting is that, it, that, that in Reiki you work through heart chakra and that's where the soul is attached to the to the heart chakra through the vibration of the heart chakra and whatever the images the soul sends you is that translated into your into what you can perceive and you can perceive the touch so you've you sense reiki energy through the touch sensations it's not really that you touch it but the soul can send it to you through the touch sensations mm -hmm. so for me it was another interesting discovery uh, and I'll talk about a few other levels just in a second, but um, the main thing I started analyzing everybody around me, where I am, where is my family, where are my friends, blah, 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 and it doesn't fit, the whole theory doesn't fit too well, too well, and I spoke to my spiritual friends and advisors, and they say, it was back in Atlantis. That's how the Atlantis was designed. That was the main experiment of Atlantis. It created the separation. It was artificial veils between the castes. It was artificial veils between the chakras. It was artificial veils between different levels of reincarnation. So it's a big experiment, not only on Earth level, but also on the spiritual level. It was an, a spiritual experiment. And it created lots of energy because separation could create lots of energy, but also it created the downfall of the Atlantis. And that's where the cosmic civilization fell down and became, um, became destroyed, basically. And that's what we inherited. And uh, I guess the caste in, in the system of India and the slavery of the West, slavery of the East, slavery of everywhere, the current separation, it's still inheritance from the Atlantis, but you know, we are working through that, we are removing those uh, veils and separators, and now it's not as fixed as before. So you cannot define anyone as they belong to the caste of traders, because I know by myself, I'm every cast possible, um, uh, you know, especially the trader, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here in spirituality, I'm here in trading, and, you know, in some parts of life I'm working quite actively through the warrior or government type of their cast, so it's not this fixed. And apparently in one life you can go, go through multiple lessons. And again, it looks like the lesson plan is not as fixed in anymore. Now you are permitted to take lessons from different levels. And as, as I teach, you know, anyone can become a Reiki healer. So I think it's still true. Even, you know, even if you 
didn't develop on other levels, you still have that capacity to become Reiki healer and become a healer, a magician healer, and work through that, through that level. Uh, uh, Max, any so far? I had a really strange experience the other day. I was just kind of like um, doing my thing with um, the sewing and creativity. Sometimes I just stare off into space, you know, with my ideas. And anyways, um, what I seen when I was staring off into space sort of freaked me out a little bit because I've never seen anything like that. But is what I seen was myself doing something and observing that. And it was kind of a lesson, I guess you might say. <laughs> But it was so physical, it was just strange, like w looking at another dimension of myself. And that was uh, that was pretty much the experience, but it really um, has stayed with me. It could have been the observer part of you. The, I know in some sciences they talk about that. Um, yeah, yeah, like, but so physical was strange. Yeah, well, was it like an out-of-body experience? Or you were looking in a window, mirroring back to you? I was, um, it was myself, but I was doing something completely different than what I was doing right now, right here, in this timeline. So, oh, like a parallel universe? Like, uh, yeah, kind of like that. Okay. It was really um, quite different. Interesting. And then, uh, I forgot, I also seen this other face pop in, kind of like at the bottom right corner. And I look at the face, and it popped back out. And I thought that was <laughs> really kind of funny. I don't know, it made me laugh for some reason. There's, um. a, belief, th there's a belief out there um, that uh, uh, we're, when we come to this life, we're, there's pieces and parts of ourselves in other dimensions, or maybe even here on Earth too, but uh, we're like fragmented, and we kind of got to do like the prime creator, bring all our pieces and parts of ourselves back to ourselves because we are the apex of this reality. Right, and I'm aware of all that. It just, yeah. I've, I've just never had anything like that happen. It was the just actual really experience different. of it. Yeah, very different. <laughs> nice. <laughs> different, uh, strange awakening in a way. It was like um, reinforcing and learning about, I guess, proof of that. Well, it's just like Max was saying earlier. He said, um, or who was it? It was uh, not Max. When uh, what's his name? Rain? Uh, Zane. When he was reading earlier about our thoughts, it's we think first, and then we have the experience, right? So. Yeah, maybe the ve the veil was just dissolving. Yeah, I, yeah, it was oh. just really unexplainable at that moment because, I mean, I do that all the time because I have to wrap my head around what I'm doing. So I'll stare off into space a lot. <laughs> it seems kind of strange to some people, but really there's a lot going on in my head. So, and then that's just like what popped up it, unexpectedly, and, and it was quite interesting. I, I watched for quite a while. It was a lesson learned for sure. Yeah, it's it's funny, Valerie, because I've been noticing, like, I watched this amazing documentary called The Spring from the Hands, which I think you would love if you do creative work. It was about this um, pinch pot maker, and it's just this incredible, like, reflection on life. And I noticed throughout the whole thing, he would, he would stop in the middle of talking and kind of stare out into space. And it's like he's, he's really... Uh, gathering what he wants to say. It's, he has the, the heart-mind connection. where he, It's not just like a, a talking head where he's just spewing stuff out. He's, he's really searching for it. And, I, and then I started noticing that in more and more people who are sort of, who, people who I admire, who I think are sort of enlightened, taking this pause as they speak and just kind of staring blankly for a little. And then all of a sudden it's like they're back. You know, <laughs> so it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, getting the download. Uh, yeah. Here, Valerie, here is the image for you. Like in Russia, uh, there is a wonderful time. Actually, it's coming now. Uh, in the spring, when um, middle size of the Russia around the Moscow, when uh, there is so much snow on the ground, when the spring comes. Uh, 
the snow starts melting and it floods the fields, floods the forests. So, so like the fish which live in certain river or certain lake, they are or fish or frogs, they they are stuck there. But during that flood, everything is kind of united. So you can swim on a uh, swim. The fish can swim from one pond to another, or you can take a boat and travel around different villages. Otherwise, you would be stuck in the dirt. But now you can you can boat, you know, back and forth, and uh, that would be the main means of communication. And because it's like in the middle of Russia, it's pretty flat. It's kind of it's not very high. It's maybe you know to your knees or around your knee, like few feet, maybe one foot, two feet, and there are islands, but basically everything becomes connected. And I think that's what, my, you know, that might be illustrating where you are. Your vibration raises, 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 and now it it raises about the veil, and you see your, your, your other timeline, or the future or parallel timeline above the veil, because the veil is not there anymore. That makes a lot of sense. And the, and, and the face that popped in and out, I, I just think it was there to, to make me lighten up. I don't know. It just made me giggle. It was, mm -hmm. it was, um, you know, kind of a chubby little face and <laughs> smiling. And and when I looked directly at it, it just popped out. It's like I'm not supposed to see it quite yet or something. I don't know. It just made me giggle. It was quite an experience, and I really enjoyed it. And so. Hey, Valerie, yeah. we're here. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like that. Kind of like. It's nice. It's nice. They can see us. <laughs> Bring me back to reality or something. No, yeah, always know. here. I like you. Like yeah. Hello, it, hello, Valeria here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So I, I I need to start wrapping up. I finished the uh, the story. Um, it's a little bit few more things which I wanted to mention. So, so basically he talks about um, I don't know translation to English. It comes from many. Uh, Many traditions, but basically it's called in Russia. It's called point of assembly. Uh, in uh, Castaneda, do you know how it's called in Castaneda? I, I, can you, can you, anybody knows that point of assembly when the soul attaches that when you assemble yourself in one chakra or another? I, I've heard that term uh, come up a few different times from different ancient traditions, like in indigenous traditions, talking about. I think Don Juan actually talking about your assemblage point. Uh, assemblage being, point. Yeah, behind your neck area, um, or or maybe even on your right shoulder. But I've heard different variations of it. I think you have the term right. So yeah. All right. Thank you. So assemblage point is called. So basically, if you move your assemblage point, it's you know it's conscious. It could be conscious. If you move your assemblage point to the heart. And then this basically the spirit, the main spirit connection, the main spirit vibration connects to, to you through your heart chakra. And the easiest way for the spirit to connect to you is through uh, the sending the nerve signals to your finger. So it's like you are feeling their uh, aura or chakras through the fingers. So that's what we do in Reiki. Now, if it raises if you raise your assemblage point to your throat, that is actually channeling, and it's speaking galactic languages. And that's why speaking galactic languages, just bubbling some galactic languages, helps you to open your channeling capacity. It's how the spirit can, can speak through you. Raising a little bit higher, I think it's still the same area because speech and the hearing connect to about the same mechanism in the brain. So sometimes when I think, especially when I'm doing like a simple arithmetics, the math, I have to use my uh, Russian language processing to, to do the math, right? So, hey Max, so whenever, that's, whenever that's, I like have my higher self come through, I feel that right where you were saying there in your jaw, that gets super, uh -huh. super tight right through there. And then I have popping in my ears. So I, that's how I know it's my higher self coming through because every time that's exactly how I feel. That was so funny how you're grabbing your cheeks there on the side by your jaw and I'm like, ah, oh, that's my spot. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. But yeah, Tina doesn't know about channeling, if you can explain that a little bit to her. Uh, 
explain the channeling? What was there, was there to explain? Um, you basically invite the spirit to come through and um, get into and just get into meditative state uh, and let them use your mind and voice and then they come through and speak for you. Sometimes it's just the message and sometimes it's more than that. Sometimes it is hard to get them out. If it is a spirit which doesn't want to get out, then uh, they kind of have your body for a while. And then, then they just leave. So we usually invite very nice spirits and uh, they, they are conscious about keeping the body in good shape and then uh, you know, we get extra, actually extra healing when, when they channel through us. So that's channeling and, uh, you know, we have aliens coming through, angels and spirits, human spirits from the other side and uh, higher spiritual energies from different dimensions. That's a simple summary. Alright, uh, so and then goes higher and it's the vision, so that's your if your point of assembly is around the visual area of the brain, around the third eye, that's your, you get the visions. I experienced like when people do Reiki on me, especially the powerful high vibrational people, I can see the blue light just from nowhere. It, it's not structure, it's just the cloud of blue, of purple, of this purple light. And it's just, you know, one of the wonderful proofs it's like really visible, I just see it, it's coming. And um, I also play this game, um, oh, it's called Daily Remote View Remote view Daily. So every day they send you the image which will be open, so, every, so you can uh, remote view what will be shown the next day, and then next, next day they show, send you the image, computer picked, uh, image, just a photograph, and sometimes it's a playing card, sometimes it's a president, sometimes it is uh, a donkey, and so on. So, so very simple images, mostly simple images. And uh, once in a while, I, I guess it's right, and I it feel, feels happy. So, so, and then I analyze how did I guess it? Where did it come from? Was it on the voice level? Was it on the uh, perception level? Like the answer? And recently, I started just kind of speaking different answers and feel how does it feel that answer feels and sometimes it feels right and you open the card and if it's right then it works so so that happens and uh, that's remote view and then it's a nice tool to develop your intuition and then uh, again you know if you uh, assemblage point is higher, then you would get the answers right from your mind and uh, not see any images. It would be just pure knowledge. And usually that's 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 my way of getting the answers. I just ask the question and sometimes it, it takes half a minute, sometimes one minute, sometimes it takes a night in the morning I just wake up and I get the answer. So I don't know how it comes there, but, but that's my way of uh, channeling. I, I just get the answers and uh, Rarely I hear the sounds or see the images, but uh, it would be just the answers. Yeah, technicals. Yeah. So I think I think I'm done with the yeah with this Manosov. Well, there is lots more, but that's kind of the the main core of. Oh, one more thing. Uh, any more questions so far? I'll switch to the next answer. Wait, I okay. I did have a question. One yes. time I was having a, a healing, someone was doing a, a massage and he was, uh, uh, my sciatic nerve was pinched and I was holding a lot of energy, so he was doing energy work and massage because he is a massage therapist and when he was doing that I had to do certain breathing because uh, it hurt and I couldn't show that it was hurting so when you breathe right the, you don't feel the pain as much and uh, at, at one point my eyes were closed and I could see these clouds of different bright color like like it was in water just going in front of my eyes I opened my eyes there was nothing I closed my eyes I could see it just bright colors like there was gold there was magenta there was blue beautiful green and it was like on a on a yellow background and it was just going by my eyes and I was just I was relaxed and I was like I'll just go with it I don't know what it was. Was it that something 
the energy suddenly could flow again or I don't know what it was. So how did you see that? It was like... Um, th thank you, Makika. I will be done in a few minutes, so you didn't miss much. Thank you, Makiko. See you later. Thank you for organizing. So, uh, how did you feel the colors? Was it like quite visible? You had closed eyes, and the colors just were well, the whole. Uh, it was very the... visible. Very visible. It, it 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 looked so real that I could reach out and touch one of those clouds or bubbles of of uh, of of. It looked like water paint going through. But it didn't mix in with each other. It just kept floating through, and it it was so beautiful. I'd never experienced that before, and it wasn't just one color when I closed my eyes. It was different colors going by. It was like pretty much magical, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I was getting a, a a massage, and he was unblocking. At one point, he pushed where my uh, where my hip is and and pain shot out of my knee and and I told him the pain just came out of my knee he says that's good that means the energy's flowing it I'm whatever's was stuck there it came out like and uh, I have no idea he's an intuitive uh, massage therapist and he believes in uh, his way of believing is the same way as Buddha like mm -hmm. uh, Michelle you want to say something yeah, I was just going to mention that um, energy, healing energy in general, um, whether it's sound, whether it's Reiki, whether it's another form of healing, um, really brings a lot of different experiences to people. It's not like every time you get that done, you're going to have the same experience. Like I've had so many experiences, whether I'm giving energy or whether I'm receiving energy, and I can, like, leave the planet, you know, like, or I can feel, I don't know how you feel what a color looks like, but I can feel what color looks like. <laughs> you know, there's so, there's so many, it's just, don't be surprised by anything. That's all I was going to say. There are so many ways to experience energy. I agree, Michelle. I, I have the same kind of experience, like um, feeling color, and that is a hard one to explain. But um, every, almost every single time I meditate, I see the colors, like you were saying, uh, Tina. I don't think that that's unusual when you're relaxed and um, you're, you're feeling better. I think that color does come into your, your mind, and it just sort of floats around and goes together. And then if you were to stay with that and be able to uh, meditate, uh, then you might have had an even more profound experience. So if I were you, it sounds like you have a natural ability to um, meditate. So work on that too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just said that uh, it's often that what I, it's intentional what I do when I do Reiki. I uh, grab the person's head and kind of intend to raise their vibration. And usually I succeed. I talk to them and... I raise their moods, raise their vibration, and when I raise their vibration, their whole perception of the world changes. They can understand what I'm talking about, because if I don't do raising, they're still in their other reality, so I need to bring them to the Reiki reality, and uh, it's conscious, and uh, that's what I, it's part of what I teach, part of what, what, what we do during Reiki is to bring them to the Reiki reality where things are possible which are not possible in their layer of being stuck. So obviously that massage therapist, he brought you somewhere where you were perceive, perceiving the, the colors. <laughs> you know, some vibe right, so maybe which opened, opened, which again, no. the le level of water raised or level of energy raised so the whale is not there mm -hmm. anymore. Yeah, and just since learning Reiki myself, I have had so many really nice experiences with healing, with healing others, healing myself. Um, sometimes I totally forget that I can heal myself, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh yeah, I can do this. I can do this myself because um, I mean I've had severe back injuries. I have two fusions and and um, nerve pain going down both legs. So um, 
this knowing how to relax that myself and allow healing is a wonderful addition to my life and I think it would be to anyone's life um, if you can try to uh, book a book a study in that with Max they, they'll be doing another session soon it's uh, well worth your time well worth well worth it I can't say enough about it it's been an amazing experience so far for me and it's going to continue the rest of my life Ah, thank you. All right, so the, fo the final thing I wanted to mention from Manosov's study is that the three chakras, uh, three lower chakras, are directed inside, meaning that they are responsible for health. And the four upper chakras, starting from heart, throat, uh, third eye, and uh, crown, they are directed outside in the outside world. And uh, they they change that world and um, they se perceive that world. So you create the world outside the world. You create your reality with higher chakras, and you create your inner. You create your outside reality with the higher chakras, and you create your inside reality with the lower chakras. So that why is grounding is important for your everything, right? For your everything and for your health especially. And for your heart, most especially for your heart. I, I've yes. had to do some extreme heart healing, and I, I'm a new person. I, I can't say that enough. It's just been a, an amazing ride. The, the way back can be, I think Michelle can agree with this, somewhat of a roller coaster at times, but it is amazing. It totally is well worth it. Yay! Yep. Valerie, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Having got, I had never had Reiki. I, ha, um, I had it a couple of years ago, and when I had it, I was like, oh my god, I don't know what this is, but I want this forever, and I want to know how. So getting Reiki and understanding what it does for, what it can do for and to you is just, it's worth, you know, investing in. Nice. Uh, we, we have uh, our, uh, most of our classes, main, some of our classes, the main parts, the main teachings are published right here on this channel. What channel is? Uh, Human Colony TV. And... Um, and uh, just go and you can watch our classes and learn. And of course you need attunement which would really introduce you to the Reiki spirits, introduce the Reiki spirits to you so you can connect more directly. It's, it's nice to have an attunement and to get, to get that protection which it gives and to get that initiation which it gives. And um, uh, now I would invite some Blessings and we'll start wrapping up. If anyone wants to do a galactic language or a blessing, and um, and I, at the end I will read more of the Alu sequence, chant more of the Alu sequence, and you can tune into that sequence. I believe it's it's a higher human upgrade sequence, which is already in us, which we can put in order and activate. How do I say it more profoundly? To structure to make the DNA, to make our genome more coherent, to make it more orderly, to make it more perfect, to make it more crystalline, to activate, to energize, to fill it with light, sound, electromagnetic energy, and ethereal energy. So I invite blessings if anyone wants. Uh, let me first collect who wants to do the blessings. So we I don't, I don't speak the galactic language, but I would like to do just a short blessing if I can. Yes, and who else? So we know who is who is coming. Uh, Brie, Michelle, Tina, Zane, are you into blessings? Yes, I'm native. <laughs> we do blessings all the time. <laughs> uh, all right, Violet, anyone else? Zane, do you want to read anything as, a, as a, maybe a poetry or a blessing? Uh, 
Michelle. Oh, Michelle, you can do your your chanting. I, I liked your chanting when you chanted the sound. It was wonderful. Do you want to do it? At all? Yes. Uh, loud noises. You can just speak <laughs> she from does the good. She's just saying loud, but she is good. She is don't worry about that being too loud, Michelle. Uh, I have the microphone control. So I can do it. And Bree, are you into blessings? Okay. How about I start? Uh, some questions, some awesome blessings to share. Yes. Uh, not today. Okay. All right. So we have. All right. I will just say names. So I will start from Valerie today. Okay. Blessings, everyone, today. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. And thank you, Max, for being here with us and bringing all this wonderful information to us. We are exactly where we want to be right now. We can accept others as they are. We can forgive with our whole hearts open. Healing is happening today and every day. Bless you all. Thank you. Um, Tina? Yes. I have a, a little chant. <laughs> And I have yes. A, I have a drum too. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. It's a song that came to me um, 10 years ago, and I'm going to sing it in Mi'kmaq. But the words are in English it's the way we think, it's the way we live our lives that defines what's in our hearts. If we really wanted peace inside, we would show it in the way we live our lives. Okay? Beautiful and very, very talented. Thank you. It's uh, it's hard to reflect in words how perfect it was. Michelle, are you into chanting? I can do toning. I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, tune in. Yeah, tune in. All right, let me connect with.
Namaste. Wow. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, Zane, would you like to join? Zane? Are you there, Zane? Can you hear us? Not here. Maybe he is disconnected somehow. I think everybody did it, right? So, Bree, you're not today, right? Yeah, I'll get there someday. Not today. All right. Okay, so I will do another ch chant of the Alu sequence. All right. Maruhata dana yata yana hamaha haya hawatu washa. Thank you very much, everybody. I think we are done for today. Thank you so much, Max. It's been a pleasure in learning everything that you had to teach today. Thank you. It was fun, and it's uh, you were very helpful to bring this about, and uh, it's nice to create this broadcast. It's nice to connect to the world in this, in this new way. And thanks for everybody new for joining us, and please come back again. And yes. um, come back and see on YouTube if you have missed anything. Right. Thank you again. And goodbye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you.